afternoon and welcome to the IDERA's virtual education. Today I'll be walking us through an installation of the IDERA Enterprise Job Manager version 2.2. I've previously installed a copy of Microsoft SQL Server onto this machine that I'm be using and I'm using version 2016 but EGM supports its repositories on anything from 2005 through to 2016. Now all the software requirements are documented in the on documentation pages at the IDERA wiki which you can see the address up here um, so you can see what's required here I'm also using uh, Windows Server 2016 but EGM supports from Windows 7 through to Windows 10 and also Windows Server 2013 to 2016 but it's also worth noting that EGM requires a couple of Microsoft modules to be installed before the installation happens and these are documented in the wiki page as you can see here basically they're the data access components 2.8 and also the .NET framework 4.0 or later. Now the IDERA Enterprise Job Manager is actually a web-based application and uses the IDERA dashboard web application to deliver it. So the IDERA web dashboard will be installed first if necessary and then EGM installed into the dashboard. Note that if you have the IDERA dashboard already installed, perhaps from another IDERA web-based product installation, then you can select to use that same installation and I, the e, EGM will just appear as another available product, subject to the user's security of course, within the IDERA dashboard. It's worth noting that all the IDERA products use IP communications between the various modules using ports. So if you're using firewalls or hardware or software, then you may need to allow communications through these ports. I just kind of pull them out into a single document here but they are listed through that on the wiki as well. So basically what we can see here is that the IDERA dashboard itself uses these four ports. Some of them are for internal communication, some of them for example for the web applications, the SSL and the non-SSL ports you can choose to connect into. Also EGM itself uses a couple of ports, one to communicate with the IDERA dashboard and one to reach out to the instances that you're asking it to monitor. So let's minimize that. Now the uh, Enterprise Job Manager hardware requirements will vary depending on the number of systems and jobs being monitored but in a similar fashion to the software requirements the hardware requirements are documented into the online documentation on the wiki pages and you can see them here. Whoops, just move off so you can get to see the full address there. Note that for larger environments, it'd be normal to split the server that's running the EGM data collection and presentation services from the server that is actually hosting the SQL server that's used to store the collected data. Worth noting that during the installation phase, we suggest you use a user who is actually local administrator um, as well as having sysadmin into the instances that'll host the IDEA repositories and try to use the right hand click run as administrator option just to avoid the kind of UAC issues. For the uh, service accounts you used for the EGM collection, I would suggest you use a user who has a sysadmin role, but if that's not available, then you can use some um, users with re reduced permissions as documented here, but there'll be some functions that aren't available. Note that the pages, the uh, actual requirements are documented on this wiki page ahead of you. And although there are granular options for specifying functionality, ultimately sysadmin privileges are documented for the ability to restart the agent if required. So that gives you some background behind the bits of information and where to find it. Let's go and look at it for real now. So I'm going to bring up my machine here. So in this directory here I've actually pulled down the installer from the from the website, same as you could, a trial version, and we've got them running here. So I'm just going to run the installer here. I'm logged on as a user who is a local administrator on the system and is also a member, has a sysadmin role in the instance we're going to use. So I'm going to run the installer, clicking run as administrator. So the first state that's going to go through is to actually install the framework, the web framework. If you've already got that installed, as I said, you don't need to reinstall it. So the idea of dashboard first, the web framework, accept the license agreements, choose the location you want it. Now this is the name that the IDERA dashboard services will run under. Again, this will need to be 
a local administrator and have the sysadmin authority in the instance that you're using to host its repository. Note that this account will be granted logon as a service because it's going to be running the service in the background. These are the ports that are going to be used and you'll probably recognize these from that list I, I gave, showed you previously. Where do we want to store the repository that's going to host the IDERA dashboard? So we can give it a machine, we can put it on a remote server if you so wished, give the database name here. Let's go with it. So now it's just installing the idea dashboard, the first part. And once that's finished, it'll automatically roll on to installing the Enterprise Job Manager. Okay, so that's the dashboard installed. Now it's invoking to run the actual Enterprise Job Manager install installation. Oh, I'll accept the, la the license agreement again. Again, where do we want to install the files? Where is the uh, dashboard? So if you've already installed the dashboard, either as we have t just now or in a previous and we're reusing it, or using an existing one, this is where if we were just doing the Enterprise Job Manager installation, we can actually point it to an existing uh, installation of the IDEA dashboard. And this contact is on this particular machine, so I'm going to type in same details as we had before. But basically that needs to be a user who has administrator authority within the IDEA dashboard. Now, in most cases you're likely to have just a single installation of IDEA EJM uh, Enterprise Job Manager into a dashboard, but you could have multiple installations and if you wanted to actually identify them separately, whoops, you can actually give them unique names. So this is the account that the SQL Enterprise Job Manager itself is going to run under. So in my case I have the same account doing that role but you don't have to have. This is the port that it's going to use to reach out to the instances it's monitoring. Where does it want to store its repository? You can see the name where it's going to be. And this is for the EJM itself, the previous repository we created was for the dashboard. So now it's just going through installing all the various parts for the Enterprise Job Manager itself and now we've actually finished the process. Okay, so now when we start up, that's actually got EGM and the IDEA dashboard itself installed. Now, as I mentioned, it's run as part of oh, as a web application. So if we come into the browser itself here, so you can use a normal or an SSL connection. So this is the first time we've actually been into the Enterprise Job Manager to start up with a wizard. So it's now asking us some bits of information so we can immediately start collecting or getting the information for us. So first thing is when a job and the alerts are raised, what do we want to do? So we can, there's some predefined uh, alert job rules here. Select the one that you might be interested in. You can also come down here and specify the uh, email settings. So this is basically saying where is the uh, email server that you want EGM to use to redirect and send on its emails through. So you're sending the messages are going to come from this user. This is the address for your SMTP server. Note if using SSL you want to put the ports in and some authentication. Always worth running a test email by the way just to make sure that those things are correct. Users. Now, 
As it says here, there are three types of users in Enterprise Charge Manager. So there's the administrator full role, there's a normal user role, and there's a kind of read owner role. If we click on the manage users here, add user, we can then specify what we want. So I'm going to create, I'll add a user called James, who's in my system. Now, what sort of user is he? Administrator, read only, user, specify it. Session timeout, how long is the session running for? If you want to be indefinite, you can just untick that box. Otherwise, you specify the hours, minutes, for the system will time out for them. And we can then go through and add more. Of course, you can go through that. You can add these users after the event. This is literally just a startup process. Move on. What instances do we want to monitor? Again, you can add them and get it afterwards. But if I just say I want to add, uh, oops, I find a strange character got in there. So it's my MB1 system. How frequently do we do reach out and collect it? Are we going to monitor the Windows tasks as well? Put them in there. When we're reaching out to that system, we're going to pick up information from the SQL side and from the Windows side. So you can give in the accounts. As you see here, we can use the actual Enterprise Job Manager service account to do that, if assuming it has authority, or you can actually specify other users and again test the connections to make sure they're okay similarly down here reaching out um, for the uh, OS metrics which you might need to want to pick up on again we can use uh, the service account or a specified account and again we can test the connection just to make sure it's okay information about that instance so within Enterprise Job Manager you can identify and make sure understand it better. So we can say this one is owned by, I don't know, Rosemary, and the location might be in Petersfield. A nice, nice location. Okay, and then we can put comments about that particular system as well. Maintenance. So if you are running maintenance activities on the system, you can actually flag jobs as you create them as being maintenance jobs and they will actually occur within a particular window and you can then opt down here to decide what you want to happen when the jobs have finished etc or jobs other jobs that are running when the maintenance window is invoked so you can actually set it up again you can do it here or you can do it later so there's the instance we've added now we can just submit that and we're now uh, as a starting point looking at that particular system you could go loop around the system, add more if you wanted to, but at this point in time, I'm just going to submit that. So we're now looking at our Enterprise Job Manager. A lot of those admin functions we were looking at before for adding and users and instance and things are all up here. Now we can actually go through here to understand, looking at the schedule for jobs, what jobs we've got, histories, jobs, job trends, and all that sort of information as we're collecting, and of course, is the core reasons behind Enterprise Job Manager. Note. If we were had multiple products, they would be uh, within the IDEA dashboard. They would be in this line down here. And note that's our EJM one for the the one we created for this system. Okay, thank you very much, and hopefully find that useful.